All right, we'll try and choose a couple of problems if, if I feel that there's a broad range. Uh, if we look at something like number 24 from the section, it's the instructions are to solve by factoring. So I'm going to write this out, 7r squared minus 13r equals negative 6. This is one of the harder ones. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 6 to both sides. And the reason why I'm doing that is because whenever we're asked to solve by factoring, we are going to set the trinomial equal to 0. And from here, I factor this thing. I know that 7r can only be broken up as 7r and r. Because the symbol pattern is negative, positive, my symbols on the inside are going to be negative, negative. And now all I need is to somehow create the number 6 using multiplication. And some people might guess, say, 2 and 3. But let's just check. I've got a 21 now, and I've got a 2. 21 and 2 can't get me to negative 13, so let's try something else. How about we try 6 and 1, all right? Now I've got 7, and I've got negative 6, so I've got negative 13 that can be created. So these are the appropriate factors. What I do from here is I set each one equal to 0 individually. Oops. And then I just solve for r. From here, hopefully you guys can follow my mental math. I'm going to add 6, then divide by 7. r equals 6 over 7. Here, r equals 1. Duh? All right. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Okay, completing the square. Let's do something like number 34. Okay, a squared minus 2a plus 12 equals 0. Okay, the directions say explicitly, and they will say explicitly on your midterm, solve using completing the square. So I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. I've got a squared minus 2a, leave yourself some space, equals negative 12. And now I'm going to add the box. Yeah, Alyssa, did I make a mistake somewhere? Was it 10? Oops, 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 okay. Uh, let me back this thing up. Okay, sorry, equals 10. So I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides, so what I get is a squared minus 2a, leave yourself space, equals negative 2 now, yes? Okay, so now I'm going to add the box. I'm going to add the box. Inside the box goes negative 1 and negative 1. Now, the reason why I added the box twice instead of subtracting the box is because I'm working on two sides of the equal sign. All right, and I'll show you guys what I mean by that when we get to the parabola. This is a minus 1 squared equals, well, negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Take the square root of both sides. a minus 1 equals plus or minus. The square root of 1 is i. I add 1 to both sides. I get a equals 1 plus or minus i. <laughs> All right, that was 34. Let's do, I'm going to do 46. But actually, no, I'm not. Just kidding. Uh, let's do number 41. Solve using the quadratic formula. Okay, the first thing they ask you to do is to find the discriminant. So let's go ahead and do that. The discriminant is found using the formula b squared minus 4ac. So in this case, b it, squared in this case is 3 squared minus 4ac. So that is 9 minus, let's see, 20, 40. So that is negative 31. Because it's negative, can anyone raise your hand and tell us what types of solutions does that produce? Jake? Two imaginary. Good. So now I pump this thing into the quadratic formula. It's x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b smart. What goes inside that radical sign? Not b squared minus 4ac. Well, it does, but Leanne? Negative 31. Plug smart. Plug s smart. You got that! Right. Army of darkness. All right, 2 times a. All right, the square root of 31. What's the square root of negative 31? Brother, I rad 31, so negative 3 plus or minus I rad 31 over 10, and that equals x. You are done. All right. 
Okay, let's move on to number, say, 46. Actually, I feel like we've done 46 already in another video. How about number 52? Y equals negative 2x squared minus 4x minus 1. Okay. We're going to use completing the square again, except this time it's going to be a little different. I'm going to say y equals, I'm going to factor out a negative 2, and that leaves me on the inside with x squared plus 2x. I'm going to kick this negative 1 out, and now I add the box. Now, I could add the box to this side, but what do I end up having to do with the box when all is said and done? Kalen. Subtracting the box. So I might as well just take that shortcut and subtract the box from the start. Now, what else happens to that box on the other side? Ryan. Gets multiplied by negative 2. Okay. Inside the box goes a 1 and a 1. All right. Uh, y equals negative 2 x plus 1 squared. See, this is the hard part. This is 1. That's negative 2. So negative 1 minus negative 2 is negative 1 plus 2, which is plus 1. Because this is graphing a quadratic equation, I am going to ask you to give a table of values. Uh, let's see here. So that'll be negative 1, 1. Okay, now, I need a number that is very easy to work with. I'm going to choose 0. Plug smart. If I plug 0 into all of this stuff up here, what's my output going to be? Brother. I'm sorry? Negative 1 is correct, yes. Now, the distance from here to here was 1, which means the distance from here to here is 1, which means the next place that the number negative 1 is going to appear is, Kalen? Negative 2, that is correct. Your axis of symmetry is going to be x equals, I'm oh, sorry, yeah, x equals, no, y equals, sorry, I'm thinking of direct x, x equals negative 1, got a little ahead of myself there with conic sections, so now I go to negative 1, 1, and what type of parabola is this, is this upside down, or is it right side up, or is it left, or is it right, what do you think, David, what do you think, it is definitely upside down. There you go. There you have it. Full credit right there on that problem. Okay. Uh, numbers 53 through 60 are already in vertex form for you, so it's basically easier versions of what I just did. Uh, let's go ahead and do, real quickly, number 66 y is less is greater than or equal to 2x squared minus 8x plus 7. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to I'm going to factor out a 2x squared minus 4x. I'm going to kick the 7 outside. I'm going to add the box. I'm going to subtract the box and that box is going to get multiplied by 2. Inside the boxes goes negative 2. So what I end up with is y is greater than 2 parentheses x minus 2 squared. This is 4 times 2, which is 8. 7 minus 8 is negative 1. I apologize if that was a little on the fast side. All right. My vertex is at 2, 1, or 2, negative 1. This is an upward-facing parabola. Now, I need to find shading. This is y is greater than, so am I shading inside, or not inside, above the vertex or below the vertex? What do you think? Uh, comrade, above the vertex, that's in here. Okay, now, what's wrong with my parabola? Brother, it's not dashed, so we got to dash this thing. Okay? Yes? Duh? Okay. 
Uh, let's see here. Okay, solving quadratic inequalities. Let's take a look at one like number 84. Okay, first thing I gotta do is I gotta factor this thing. I need two numbers that multiply to 32 and somehow get us to, here. I believe it's going to be 8 and 4. That is correct because it's 12 and 8. That's correct. So that's going to be, I need 12 to be negative and 8 to be positive. So from here, my critical numbers are going to be where this function equals 0. So that's going to be negative 8 over 3 and positive 4. From here, I go ahead and plug those into my number line from here 3x plus 8 and x minus 4 go into here a number that's lower than negative 8 over 3 say negative a trillion is going to give me negative and negative a number in between negative this thing and positive 4 would be 0 so that's positive negative and then a trillion is bigger than four, so that's positive, positive. So my final intervals are positive, negative, positive. Because I'm looking for the places where my function is less than zero, who can raise your hand and tell us what interval am I looking for? What interval am I looking for? Nikita, the middle one, the negative, because I'm looking for stuff that's less than zero. So the way I write that, I have less than or equal to, so it's going to be negative eight over three comma four, and they're both hard brackets. Okay? Do another one. Why don't we do something like number 95? All right, so... Anyone know what my critical numbers are for this function? There's four of them. Ryan, what do you got for us, buddy? Uh, negative four, one, three, and one fourth. Cool. So now I pump this thing into the sign chart here. Negative four being the smallest, one fifth being the next smallest, then one, then three. I put my four functions in, v plus 4, v minus 1, v minus 3, 5, v minus 1. Okay, so now a number smaller than negative 4, negative a billion, will give us all negatives here. In between negative 4 and 1 fifth is 0, so that's going to be positive, negative, negative, negative. In between neg uh, 1 fifth and 1, let's just say 2 fifths. Two-fifths into here, four plus two-fifths is going to be positive. Two-fifths minus one is negative. Two-fifths minus three is negative. Two-fifths here, that would give me the fives cancel out. Two minus one would be positive. In between one and three would give me two, so that would be positive, positive, negative, positive. And beyond three would be at, like a trillion, positive, 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 positive. So my final intervals are positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. I am looking for where this function is less than zero. So which which intervals am I looking for where this thing is less than zero? What do you think? Um, Alan, what do you think? Where am I less than zero here? Yeah. Are we looking for positive intervals or negative intervals? Negative. There you go, dude. Alan, when was the Battle of Hastings? No, it's 1066. Okay, so in my final interval statement, I'm going to say negative 4, comma, 1 fifth. And it's soft brackets because I don't include anything. I need that symbol for when I jump an interval. What is that symbol called, Kylie? It's a U. It stands for union. And then from 1 to 3. That's my answer. All right, so let's all right, uh, let's see.
see here. Identify the center and the radius and then sketch each graph. All right. Let's do something like number 103. Hey, Jake, when we get to around where you want, just raise your hand and let me know which one you want. Oh, I'm sorry, 165. Straight on the board. Okay, this one is x squared plus y squared. Already, you should be able to identify this as a circle, all right? And because the two terms are being squared, they're being added, and the coefficients are the same. I'm going to add 12 to both sides. I get x squared plus y squared plus 4y. I'm going to leave myself space equals 12. I'm going to do completing the square for y. It's a 2 here and a 2 here. So I got x plus y plus 2 squared equals, that's 4, so 16. What is the center and what is the radius of this circle? What's the center of the circle? How about, brother? 0, negative 2. And what's the radius of this circle? Uh, let's see. Julia? 4. So what I do is I draw this thing on my coordinate plane. I go 0, negative 2, and I go out 1, 2, 3, 4 in every single direction. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it should look kind of like this thing here, as best it can. All right. Okay. So let's take a look at number 105 here. Uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and add... 25x squared, and then subtract... Oh, wait a second. No, that's a dumb idea. Uh, I would recommend, actually, we should subtract 16y squared from both sides. And what that gives us is negative 25x squared plus 100x minus 16y squared plus 32y equals negative 284. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the whole thing by negative 1. So what I get is 25x squared minus 100x plus 16y squared minus 32y equals 284. This is an ellipse because both x squared and y squared are positive and they have different coefficients. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use completing the square and factor out a 25x squared minus 4x, leave yourself some space, plus Factor out a 16 from y squared minus 2y equals 284. I'm going to add the box, and I'm going to add the box. i got to do the box again, and the box again. Now, what are the things that I need to remember about the boxes? Khalil? By 25 and 16. So I've got a negative 2 on the inside. I've got a negative 1 on the inside, so negative 2 and 1. This is 25x minus 2 squared plus 16y minus 1 squared equals, this is 4 times 25 is 100. This is 16. 284 plus 16 is 300 plus 100 is 400. If I divide everything by 400, actually I did this problem in period 2. I get I end up with x minus 2 squared over 16 plus y minus 1 squared over 25 equals 1. My center, A, B, and C. Center is going to be 2 comma 1. A is going to be, I'm sorry, what is A going to be? Who can raise your hand and let us know? What is A going to be in this problem? Jake? Four. Arg! Five. That's the bait right there. It's 5. Oh. B is 4, right? In an ellipse. The bigger number is the major axis. In a hyperbola, it's the front It's the front number. To find C, I use cab formula backwards. So C squared equals 25 minus 16. C squared equals 9. Therefore, C equals 3. So we have all the information we need to graph this ellipse. So we go to 2 and 1. Which way am I going to go 5? Top to bottom or side to side? Clearly, what do you think? Top to bottom, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
and then out one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm going to travel out three for my foci. Which way is that going to go? Which way are my foci going to be? Ryan, what do you think? Up and down. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good. Now, I'm not done yet. My major axis and my minor axis. What, is the, what are the lengths of these axes, major and minor? What are the lengths of them? What do you think? Leanne. Ten and eight. And then what are my focal coordinates going to be? Well, we center the focal coordinates at the center, so negative, so 2, comma, 1. Brother? 1 plus or minus 3. Good. Yeah, uh, Jake. Because C squared was 9. Oh, yeah. Using cab formula. Okay, so that was an ellipse. Let's do a hyperbola. Okay, I'm going to do number 116, and that's because something harder is on the is on the period 2 video, so check that one out if you need to. Negative 25 equals negative y squared plus x squared. I'm going to divide everything by negative 25. So I'm going to get 1 equals y squared over 25 minus x squared over 25. And in fact, just to keep things all nice looking, I'm going to set it equal to 1 this way. What's the center, what's A, and what's B? What do you think? Stephanie Boyer, what's the center, what's A, and what's B? Uh-huh. Five and five. Okay. So I draw this thing out. I go out from zero, zero. I go out five, 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 five. I draw the box. I draw my asymptotes through the corners of the box. What type of hyperbola is this? Is this an up and down hyperbola or is it a side to side hyperbola? Who knows the answer? Why don't we... David. It is up and down. How could you tell that, dude? Y comes first. Okay. C is found by doing C squared equals A squared plus B squared. That is root 50, which is about 7.1. So I'm going to travel out 7.1 here and 7.1 here. That's pretty much where it's at. So from here, we're not done. We need to find the vertices, the focal coordinates, and the slope. I always center the vertices at the center. In this case, it's 0, 0. I'm going to go plus and minus 5. And then focal coordinates are going to be 0, comma, 0, plus or minus root 50. Anyone know what the slope of the lines are in this one? Whenever it's a box, it should be pretty easy. Stephanie? Plus or minus 1. Why? No, you're just looking for the slope. Okay, why don't we do number 120... We've done enough completing the score for one day, so why don't we jump to number 125, something, something a little faster. All right, everybody, let's get our attention back. What is the direction of opening of this parabola? Where is this thing opening, Kylie? Up. Julia, what's the vertex of this parabola? Negative 6, negative 2. And how do I find C in a parabola? How do I find C in a parabola? What formula do I use this time? Olivia. 1 over 4A. 
In this case, A is one half. So that is one half. So from here, I go ahead and graph this thing to the left six down two. Moves up. My C is going to be one. Okay. My focus needs to be inside the parabola, so which way am I going to travel to get to my focus? Brother, i got to go up. So that means that my focal coordinates are going to be negative 6, negative 2, plus 1 half. My directrix is going to be, this one's the equation of a line, so it's y equals negative 2 minus 1 half. All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop here for today. I'll do the rest of the problems tomorrow.